Hey everyone, so we're getting ready to put our rub on our brisket and pork butt. We're gonna do a Texas style rub today. I usually use about one third sea salt as well as uh, about two thirds coarse black pepper. Uh, it's important to use coarse black pepper and that way you can get a good consistency to the rub. I'll mix these two here together. So I let the brisket and the pork butt uh, warm up to room temperature. This is important because you don't want any variation in temperatures when you're putting them into the smoker. And so if you put in a really cold pork butt or brisket, then it's going to change the temperature of your smoker fairly quickly. Uh, the brisket on the left is actually a grass-fed um, fresh brisket. It was butchered in July, so I'm interested to see how this comes out. Uh, the pork butt uh, bought at Sam's. And uh, it's about an eight pound pork butt, and I'd probably say roughly about a 10 pound brisket. So, so as we're mixing this here, make sure I got a good consistency. Uh, sometimes I use a different rub with cumin, garlic, uh, cayenne pepper, brown sugar, um, kind of make a brown sugar based rub. Uh, and uh, But this time I'm gonna use um, just kind of more Texas style authentic rub. Uh, because I want to really see what the flavor of the brisket is going to be like. So um, use mustard for the binding agent. Um, you can't taste the mustard, so um, so it's always been known to be a good binding agent. Um, that fat cap on the back of the pork butt, um, you know, I usually leave that there. I don't trim down my briskets too much. Um, some people will trim them down pretty well, but this brisket was pretty well trimmed. Um, you'll notice if you go to the store, um, you need to get a full brisket if you get um, kind of a half brisket. Those typically don't come out as tender. And so you can see how this brisket just kind of folds up and so um, I think it's going to be really good. Um, it's important to cook this fat part down and so that's going to go down in the, in the smoker in a little while. So we'll set our smoker to about 225 to 250. I'm going to use a combination of charcoal and wood which I'll show you in a little bit. And um, so let's get started. So I use a combination of mesquite and hickory. Uh, I use the hardwood coal uh, that's already kind of in um, Kind of charcoal form um, and then that'll be my base and I'll get that lit and then I'll use um, the wood on top of that so um, we have uh, quite a bit of room here to put the pork butt and the brisket uh, we can actually cook a few uh, the temperature is actually starting to get up there and so I'll typically wait till it's actually about uh, 220 and put the pork butt and brisket on there fire was getting a little too hot so what I did was I used beef broth to spritz the brisket and the pork butt. Usually you use apple juice. I didn't have any apple juice unfortunately so I messed up on that part but the fire is going pretty good there now. Um, so you so what I decided to do is just go with some beef broth. It's got the most mildest flavor and it's not going to be too salty, so I think that'll help. I did close down this vent here a little bit, and so that'll help control that fire as well. So we'll come back and check on everything a little bit. Hey guys, so right now we're kind of in a trouble spot. Um, Temperature is about 173. Um, of course, I gotta get it up now. Luckily, it was going good all night. We stayed up all night um, looking at the temperature. Um, kept it roughly between 220 and 280 overnight. Um, these temperature fluctuations happen, especially if you're using an offset charcoal smoker. Uh, 
it's not really a great way that I found to do it. I was in I bought a pellet grill, so, um, or a vertical pellet smoker, which you can set it and forget it. So um, I chose this way because I wanted to get that authentic kind of bark on the brisket and the pork butt. Uh, so um, we're just going to have to kind of bear through this right now. Right now the temperature is climbing up to about 180. It's getting higher. Uh, we're in that stall period right now, 155, 142 uh, on the brisket and pork butt. Um, this is really going to make you feel like you aren't progressing and you've probably ruined the meat, but you've just got to really be patient and ride it through the stall. Um, I don't wrap my pork butts or briskets anymore. Um, you'll get a different flavor. If you wrap it, you get less of the bark. If you don't wrap it, you get more of the flavor of the traditional uh, smoked barbecue. So that's why I've gone away from wrapping it. Uh, if you wrap it also in foil, it can be more like a pot roast at the end. And, and so then you get really frustrated with smoking it and you don't um, get that crispy uh, bark to it. Um, I've started using butcher paper. There's like a peach paper that you can buy on Amazon. Um, that does help. Um, but again, sometimes it can get too juicy and then it ruins the bark that you've worked. You know, we're in hour 12 right now, so it'll ruin all that. So I'm going to just ride this out with, um, not wrapping it. Franklin's, uh, in Texas, which is a really famous barbecue place. They advocate, uh, usually not wrapping it. Um, I know he does wrap some of this stuff. Um, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so we're going to take out our brisket now. Our temperature is already about 190. Since it's a small brisket, um, you know, I don't want it to get dry and burn. So you can see here we got a beautiful bark. The pork butt is still going. That's an 8-pound pork butt, so roughly about an hour and a half or two hours. It's going to take about 16 hours, so we're still on the time for the pork butt, but let's pull this brisket off and see what we got. So I'm really excited to see what our brisket looks like here. As you can see this bark is pretty exceptional. Um, and uh, so we cooked this for roughly probably about 16 hours and um, as you can see it shrunk in size pretty good. But um, you can see it does have some elasticity to it, and so, um, yeah, this is going to be good here. So as you can see, we got our nice smoke ring here, you can see it's still fairly juicy. Let's do the test here. So this is definitely the kind of consistency that we wanted to see here. It bends nicely, so I think that this came out perfect. Hey everyone, so we finished our pork butt. I ended up wrapping the pork butt uh, because we had stalled a little bit and um, I'd already gotten pretty much a perfect bark on it. So um, I put a little bit of apple juice in there and then wrapped it in foil. Uh, normally I would do peach paper, but I didn't have any today. Um, so I think it looks great, to be honest. Um, see, it's already falling off here. Um, normally what I do to make sure that it's tender and it's done is to uh, pull the bone out. So, if the bone pulls out just like that, well, then we're done. So you can see this is going to become shredded pulled pork. And, um, you know, look at that bark. I think it's uh, I think it's perfect. So overall, this um, this came out really good. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll just I have some claws that I do use to tear this up. And um, so I think that uh, wow came out perfect. So overall, this took about 18 hours, probably a little bit longer than I'd like, but it's got a good smoke flavor. 
it's got a good um, smoke ring to it, so um, the Texas style rub worked out perfect for both the, um, the brisket and the pulled pork. Hope everybody enjoyed, and uh, tune in next time.